This is Ben Porcy at topvelocity.net, and I'm doing a pitching analysis here of Ben, and I'm going to pair him up with my Japanese pitcher. I can't pronounce his name. So let's take Ben here into his leg lift. Let's take the Japanese pitcher here into his leg lift. Now notice here how he closes off. He, you know, he, he brings that lift leg back to that lift leg knee back to his drive leg, that exposes his front hip, allows him to easily lead with his hip, but also it just helps really close the hips off because we know that through the stride, the, the, the whenever when the hips open, if the hips open too early, then our force production, our ability to build power through the stride, uh, is really restricted at that point. So. Staying closed as long as possible allows us to produce more force, more power through the stride. So it's a good um, mechanic to, or a good, good component to, to close off with your left leg. And like I said, it also allows, it makes it easier for you to lead with your hip. And so you don't open early and reach with your left leg. Um, you can see here Ben is kind of lifting straight up. And um, you can, you even kind of, dip down um, I know that's the beginning of your movement here but but your lift leg is just that typical kind of lift and balance um, I really like an approach that as once you spring your start to bring your lift leg up it's time to get going so you'll see here with the Japanese pitcher his head and his hip are inside his drive leg we see here with Ben his head is just inside of it but not as uh, he doesn't have that good forward momentum at this point as, as the Japanese pitcher does. I also don't like the, the hands up so high. I think it'll cause you to swing your arm out of your glove. And, and if, you know, if you understand or you know the 3x approach, that's the last thing to go in the delivery. So you definitely don't want to start that the arm action too early. So I, I like to see a more relaxed position here um, with that good body movement or, or lean or uh, and, and definitely closed off. All right, so let's take the Japanese pitcher into the load. Now we can see as the leg descends, he tries to keep it back um, towards that drive leg as he's building his momentum forward just to keep it closed as long as possible. He doesn't start to throw it open until his force vector, which is his ankle to knee, gets in line with that front hip. So that means he was moving forward as he was building speed when his while his lift leg was descending. Um, but notice as his front leg is, is moving out, it's not opening up. We can see the knee and the foot is to third base here. So he's still very closed off with the hips. So therefore, he's in a great position to launch and really build that uh, power through the next component, which is triple extension. So let's take Ben into his load position. Now, Ben's using kind of the old drop and drive, which is just you lift and you drop and squat. The problem, problem with that, it's good that you're loading or building flexion on your drive leg, but if you're not moving forward, then you're going to have to uh, uh, start, basically your delivery starting at this point. So it'd be like you putting your foot down right where you are and then starting all over again. So um, if you're going, when, when building flexion, it's important to move and build momentum forward so we can line up that force vector and so we're accelerating into triple extension uh, you don't want to come squat down here uh, this is just an awkward position to move forward in and then you kind of drift out and you put the drive leg in a position um, to where it's really hard for it to recover because you've been sitting on uh, that you know that's in that squat position the whole time um, it, it's not really uh, conducive to uh, using the stretch shortening cycle where you kind of load as you're moving forward and then into extension. This you're kind of sitting and just the muscles are having to contract and hold themselves which is kind of fatiguing to the leg. Um, and it's not, like I said this is not um, building momentum, building speed to the target. Um, so we can see here when you actually get your force vector in line um, you, your, your front leg is a little bit open um, but like like I said, here it just doesn't look like you haven't, you know, you haven't built, you're not really accelerating or coming off your drive leg. I can see it just collapsing. So it's a lot of what that drop, that early drop and not moving forward would do, or that kind of squat 
and, and without leading with your hips and actually building speed is it's really hard to recover from it. I, I don't, unless you have incredible leg strength, it's going to be hard to recover from it. So it looks like you're not. So we can see the difference here. This is the, the Japanese pitcher looks like he's just about to attack the zone. He's got still got control of that drive leg. It's still leading the delivery. It's, it's the, it's the engine behind the delivery and it's ready to launch, which we're going to watch it here move into triple extension. And you can see how it just, it's really an explosive triple extension. He, he hits the full triple extension in the front foot strike. And just at front foot strike, the belt buckle goes to the target, which means the hips are open and the shoulders are perfectly close. Now we can see here with Ben, like I said, that leg just continues to collapse as he puts down and he's still dug in the rubber. So you're touching down and you still really haven't come out of the rubber. You're also already starting to throw the ball. We can't throw the ball into the hips open because ultimately we want to build hip to shoulder separation. Um, if you if you watched, uh, I recommend you watch the 3X Mechanics video at the top of the Mechanics and Analysis form and uh, learn the components uh, behind the approach, which is basically, we, you know, we want to build power and then convert that power through hip to shoulder separation. Now the building of the power comes through triple extension, it comes through the stride. Every Everything we do to front foot is our only chance to build power. Now the only way we're going to be able to use that power is we have to convert it to, into torque, which is what we call hip to shoulder separation, and that's how it kind of moves up the kinetic chain into the body. Um, so if we can't, if we don't build enough power through our stride, it also limits how much hip to shoulder separation we're able to create. And if um, you also follow the 3x approach, it's it, it come it's based around the uh, MPA's discoveries of hip to shoulder separation. Are there studies or that, um, that specifically their velocity study 2005 through 2006 that showed that up to this comp position here, when you first hit hip to shoulder separation front foot strike you have pretty much maxed out your ability to generate velocity. So they would say, they say, and through this study, 100% of your velocity is created at hip to shoulder separation. So 20%, they say, comes from the directional movement in the stride, the power movement from the stride, and then 80% comes from the, your ability to how well you are able to separate your hips from your shoulders, the front foot strike. So we would see this Japanese pitcher here, um, he is hit it perfectly. This is at the point where he should have maxed out everything the, those two main components uh, so he can reach his top velocity and we can see he has he has the power we can see the triple extension we can see that he's through that triple extension he's hit a full stride he's off the rubber so we know he had good momentum which is power to move off off the rubber like that and we can see he converted it because we can see his hips are open at front foot and his sh shoulders are still closed so we know he's going to hit his reach his top velocity at this point potentially um, and then you, you look here at front foot strike with Ben, and we can see um, they're a short stride. Um, he's not off the rubber, so he did not generate the power through the stride. And we can see because of that, we didn't get a lot of conversion. We don't, the hips are still closed and the shoulders are closed, but the hips are closed with it. So there's no hip to shoulder separation. So Ben is not in a good position to reach his top velocity. There's no way, way really from this point on when we start to throw the ball with our arm, can he make up for that loss in power and in torque? Um, so that's really the approach to 3X. Learn how to build the power through the stride, through, tri through triple extension, and then learn how at front foot strike to convert that to hip to shoulder separation. Because if you could, Ben, if you could do what this Japanese pitcher here is doing um, and put yourself in that position with this kind of a ballistic movement, you would be able to reach your top velocity. And, and, and that's where the 3X program will meet its claims. You'll, you'll definitely go up 5 to 10 miles an hour. I'd say with you probably... 15 miles an hour just because of uh, the improvements that you can make um, and, and you so we'll watch here look so you're not going to create the hip to shoulder separation if you don't convert it if you don't have a powerful stride and you're not able to convert it from foot strike because look when your hips come through let's see the point of your hips coming through so that's right when your hip open we can see belt buckle finally right there would open to the target and look how the whole way through your hip and shoulder are coming together now we can watch here with the Japanese pitcher. Look at his hips. Now we can watch them move forward, and that and the shoulder is is completely independent of that movement. And that's really what uh, 
creates or puts you in a high velocity category. So now, so Ben, you're in a low velocity category because of that. You're going to finish in a low velocity category, standing up, pour forward trunk, pour forward trunk tilt, uh, short stride. Uh, you know, you don't have that front leg extension. We can see the Japanese pitcher here goes into great external rotation, early internal rotation, good forward trunk tilt, great leg front leg extension, stabilization. So these components at the end would never have happened if he wasn't able to generate the power he was capable of generating through his stride and then converting that to this great hip to shoulder separation. So this is why I use him as an example and he's a 95, a 90 to 95 guy and, and he weighs 150 pounds. I mean, it's insane. A very explosive athlete, little, but very explosive um, and, and able to uh, really uh, convert that that explosiveness through torque and through his body into the ball. So, and, and this is really the prototypes of 3X pitching. This is what the program is really uh, training you to uh, almost become uh, these type of pitchers. So you're going to have a throwing program uh, and a strength and conditioning program. The throwing program is going to help you develop the motor coordination to move like this, this elite pitcher. And the strength and conditioning program is going to help you develop the strength and power to actually come off the rubber through, a, through an effective explosive triple extension and then have the strength at front foot to then convert that to torque and take advantage of the short stretch shortening cycle. So those two together, merit, you know, that's the, the really the, the bread and butter of the program and why it's such a, a successful program and a well-known program is because it can marry the strength and conditioning program with the throwing program and have the ultimate effect of creating um, a, a, high, a hard throwing pitcher, an elite pitcher, um, and really allow you, even uh, whoever you are, to, to be successful. Um, so I, there's no limitations. I really believe anyone can come to this program and, and reach their velocity goals. All right, so I hope that helps. appreciate you sending your video, and I wish you the best of luck.